Hello everybody and welcome to this week's From the Laboratory to the Classroom, where I take a look at the research so you don't have to. Now this week the article I've selected is The Power of Feedback Revisited, a meta-analysis of educational feedback research by Wisniewski, Zier, and yes, the man himself, John Hattie. Now to wrap our heads around this article, there are three concepts we've got to clarify. The difference between research, meta-analysis, and meta-synthesis. So let's start here, research. Anytime anyone just does a technique, a strategy, and gathers their own data, that's research. Cool. Now, any given year, dozens of research papers can be published on a single topic. So what a meta-analysis does is it comes by and it pools together a bunch of individual research studies and kind of says, here's what they mean together as a whole. So a meta-analysis isn't research itself. It's just taking research and saying, here's kind of the bigger picture. Now, a metasynthesis does the same thing with meta-analysis. So a metasynthesis takes together a bunch of different meta-analyses and says, here's kind of what they're all saying together as a whole. So even a bigger picture. Now, why does this matter? Well, if you know anything about John Hattie and visible learning, all of his work is metasynthesis. So he doesn't do actual research. He doesn't do actual analyses. He does analyses of analysis. Now this isn't a bad technique, but it does come with issues. So any meta-analysis can pull any studies at once, which means when you do a meta-synthesis, there's a really good chance the same exact study is going to appear multiple times in different analyses. Meaning when you do your big meta-synthesis, you're actually analyzing the same exact data set time and time and time again and giving it more and more and more weight. So this kind of repetition thing is an issue. So enter this paper, what does John do? John decides, all right, let's go back. He takes his metasynthesis, goes back to the meta-analyses, then goes back to the original research. And he says, let's just take the original papers, reanalyze those and build our new meta-analysis. See if we can get a more specific, nuanced, better picture of what's going on with feedback. And what did he find? After doing all this new original analysis, they find that whereas originally visible learning had a, an effect size for feedback of 0.73, which made it like the 10th most powerful thing on his list. When they did their reanalysis at a deeper, more nuanced level, that effect size dropped to 0.48, which would only rank around 52 on Hattie's list. Now, A, this should already give you a good sense of how silly ranking and listing strategies are. If feedback would be 52nd, yet feedback is something we all know is one of the most important things we can do, Mm, starts to beg questions. But why? Why did it drop so far to 0.48? It turns out there's a lot of difference, heterogeneity in the research. A lot of people are looking at different things and when you pull them together, it's kind of pulled in a bunch of different directions. Now here's the issue with this paper. The <laughs> When I first read the title, I thought it was going to be really super meaningful for all of us in education. Turns out it's not. It's more of a methods paper. It's really heavy on analysis and what does meta-analysis mean and how do you run statistics and kind of weak on the, so what does this all mean? Although there is one really awesome bit about this paper that I want to point out at you and you know, you can kind of take it as read, read it into it however you want to. And it's this. So when John for Visible Learning did his meta-synthesis, he took a look at 32 unique meta-analysis, pulled those together to get his 0.73. In this new paper, when they took a look at and went deeper into the, into the studies, here's what they found. Okay, of those 32 meta-analyses that went into making Visible Learning, seven didn't include any numerical data. One wasn't even about feedback. So now we've gone from 32 to 24. So we've got 24 meta-analyses with a total of 732 studies that we can draw research from. But let's not stop there. How many of those 732 studies were repeats? 118 of them were duplicates. All right, so now we're looking at 614 original studies we can analyze. But wait a second, 70 of those studies actually have nothing to do with education. They look at feedback and non-educational, non-learning realms. Okay, so we gotta ditch those. That brings us to 544 studies, of which 109 report no numerical data, which means at the end of the day, we're stuck with 435 articles. Now, don't get me wrong, 435 articles is awesome, but when you really get nuanced and look at it, 435 unique articles is very different than 32 huge meta-analyses that synthesize together to make visible learning, especially when you see almost half of those meta-analyses were either unusable or duplicates of the same exact data. 
So this is why nuance and getting down into the nitty gritty is kind of important. It shines a new light on what other people are doing and it helps us make better sense of contextualize what visible learning and all these other research projects might be.